Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about these numbers. Um, I get quite a few questions asking me have I got the right tyre, how to choose the right tyre, what do all the numbers mean. So today's video is to go through all of these numbers and to try and explain it as simply as possible. So one thing to bear in mind, each tyre manufacturer does it their own way. There's no hard and fast rule, but usually um, they will stick to this rule of thumb, this lettering and number arrangement. Now something we have to remember is, we're going to start off in millimetres, we're going to end up in inches and we're going to have a few percentages in there. No wonder it's so confusing. Let's try and make it as simple as possible. So 235 is your width across your tyre. That is in millimetres. 65 is 65% of 235 and that is your wall height. R is how your tyre, how your tyre, tyre, how your tyre is constructed. <laughs> so the internal construction, nearly all tyres produced today are radials. Now there can be another letter there, a B which is biased and D which is diagonal and that's just how the tyres are put together internally. 16 is the amount of inches from that side to that side. That's all that is. That's the size of your wheel. Now C, this C, this letter here can be a number of letters and it's basically the reinforcement that's gone into the tyre. So if it's a commercial tyre, which this is, it's got additional reinforcement in the tyre and the sidewalls to, to help carry the load. Um, 4x4 tyres are usually extra load, um, so they can be XL, extra load, um, reinforced or RF, it can be a number of different letters, but most of them stick to C and extra load, EXL. So you've got your numbers down here as well, these are basically repeated from there to there. Now these are the numbers that are really important here. So on this tyre is rated, this is its load rating here, these two numbers. So 155 is the single weight, so if that was a single wheel on the back of your vehicle, it would be rated to that. Now if it was a double axle, double wheel on the rear, it's slightly down rated to 113 and that is so, I, I believe, it can still carry the capacity, but if one tyre was to puncture, um, it would have enough weight, enough reinforcement, and enough strength in itself to carry your load on until you've got your tyre repaired or replaced. That's my understanding of it. Um, stand corrected, you know, if somebody knows any anything different to that, but that's how I've interpreted it. Now the next letter is an R, and that's for... The speed rating so every tire that's produced has a speed rating as well and you know the, the, these are the important num numbers and letters for me that is just your sizing but this is your load rating and that's your speed rating now these vehicles here <laughs> don't need a very high speed rating but they do need a high load rating because we take them and nine times out of ten we run them at their capacity we build our vans, these are designed to carry loads intermittently. So pick a load up, drive to a, its destination, offload it, drive empty somewhere, pick it up. We're basically loading these up to the maximum they can carry and they're carrying it all the time. So for me, you want a tyre that is more than capable of handling the loads that you've put in it. So my van is up plated. This is the tyre I carry at the minute. And I'm going to change that because this isn't the same tread pattern as what I've got on the van. It's for emergency purposes only. And in all honesty, I forgot to change it. I've, I've been meaning to change it for a long, long time. So, as soon as I finish this video, we're off to buy a new tyre. Because <laughs> this doesn't compare to what I've got on now. So I'm going to show you what we've got on now. And we'll have a look at the... The markings on that tyre as well because there is other bits of information on here there's uh, wear markers there's all them sort of things so i'm going to show you them on 
the all-terrain tyres that most people are fitting on the vans now because they like the look and they get you out the mire, we'll say, when you need it. We ended up buying the BF Goodridge all-terrain KO2s. There you go. And we chose them because they're hard wearing, they get good reviews, they do put out a little bit more noise than a standard tyre, but I had to play that off about against the tread pattern and how good these are off-road. Now, we've never got stuck anywhere, we've been to a number of shows and events and venues where we've needed to, to really uh, test our skills at driving and... These tyres have never let me down. I've never even deflated them yet. But I really do enjoy the look of these tyres and the fact that they'll get me out of any situation as long as I drive appropriately. So the load rating on these tyres, again, is quite substantial. A 120 and a 116. Now, 116 is 1,250 kilograms. So that there even on a, a single axle is is more than man enough that there is for me is the minimum number i'd be looking to put on this vehicle on any tire so these are letters we've not actually mentioned before so instead of having a, a c there or another letter there we have lt there and that means light truck so it is a a rated tire um it's just lettered differently and this is probably because it's American. So we've got a slightly bigger tyre on this time. The tyres I've just showed you were the original tyres. So these are two, three, five, four, five, sorry, so 10 millimetre wider. And they're 10% taller. R16s again, so radial construction of the tyre. 16, the size of my wheel. An S for the speed. So what I'm going to try and do is, in the video description, I will include a PDF speed rating document and I'll also put on there a tyre load rating document. And remember all the tyre load ratings in kgs, your van plate is in kgs as well. But if you, if you go for 116 on each corner, I'm sure that's one, I'm going to have to check my figures out now, I'm sure that's 1250 kilos. Watch me, watch me get it wrong. <laughs> so here, this, these are some more numbers that are really important. This one here is very important. This is the date of uh, manufacture. So this will, if they needed to check this tyre, something went wrong with it, and they had to go back into the system, they could tell when this is built and the date it come off the production line was week 46, 2021. Now that's an important item to look at. When you go for your MOT, if you have a tyre that is over 10 years old, it's an automatic fail. Um, so that's something to look at. A lot of motorhomes and a lot of um, camper vans aren't used that often. Um, people buy them, people build them, and they use them twice a week, twice a year, two or three times a year. The rest of the time they're put away. Now they could be stored inside, there's nothing saying that the tyres are defective, but once they get to 10 years old, they should be removed from your vehicle and replaced with new ones because you don't know what's happening inside that tyre. It could end up delaminating, it could end up having a blowout. Um, so that's the reasoning behind, after 10 years, get rid of them, change them out. Plus, your MOT examiner will be looking for that date. And if you tamper with that date, or if that date's scrubbed off, it will go down as a as a defect, um, it won't stop you getting an MOT, but it will be recorded that it's defected. So they'll recommend that you change the tyre anyway. Another thing I love about the BF Goodridge is they've got wear indicators on the side and they've got little triangles on the inside. So that, when you get down to there and you start seeing that little nobble, that little nudge, ooh, whatever you want to call it, do you see that disappearing or coming away it's time for a new one so I wasn't too far off with the number that I said I said 1250 it's actually 1260 so max load for a dual is 1260 max load for a single 
is 1380 kgs. So putting that across the rear axle, that's nearly 2.7 ton. Um, so you get quite a bit of weight on that rear axle. Another symbol you'll find on the Kyoto's is this one here. And this basically states that these are designed for mud and snow. One of the main comments we get quite a lot about the Kyoto's is, oh, they're expensive. But they're expensive for a reason. They are good at what they do. These are class winning tyres. Um, they have been used in multiple rallies and races and they work. Look at the side size of that side wall protection. That tyre there is designed to bounce you off obstacles that would normally dig in and rip the side wall up your tyre. I've had a few misdemeanors, I don't know if you can see that. There's a couple of cross marks in there where I've clicked curbs and, and stones and the like and we've come off scot-free, no issues. They're well constructed, they are really strong and durable and you're advised that you will get round about 50,000 miles out of these tyres, but I've seen online guys posting 90,000. So, they may be nigh on double the price of a normal tyre, but they're worth it. You get your money's worth out of them. Would I put them on in the future? I don't know. Um, I did select the wrong size when I, when I put these on. I wanted to fill the void. You know, I wanted to fill all that space. So I put a slightly bigger tyre on. Potentially, I would put it back, make a smaller tyre, put that on there, just to, so my speed all works properly, and uh, my fuel computer works properly. I probably would get them again, or I might try a different manufacturer and uh, a different tread pattern, just to see, see what they like. But I am two years in, and I have still got a lot of tread left on there. I hope you appreciate this. It took me longer to colour these letters and numbers in than it did to make the video. <laughs> I hope it worked. So a quick recap on what all the numbers mean again. 235 is your tread width in millimetres. 65 is your wall height from your rim to the top of your tyre in percentage. So it's 65% of the width. R is for the construction, how the tyre is made up. So this is a steel and fabric and rubber constructed tyre. 16 is in inches, and that is the size of your wheel. And C is for the reinforcement or the design purpose. So that's like, most people say that's for commercial. But it is meaning that this tyre is reinforced to carry extra weight. The important numbers for me are your load rating and the important letter is your speed rating. There you go, that was a stone sign there. Right, another thing we talked about was wear markers. So they're wear indicators there. They are set at the legal limit. They are 1.6 millimetres. But another thing you can do with these as well is you can check that they're evenly matched. So the depth there, there and there, if they're equal, that tells you that your tyre is wearing it appropriately, everything on your car is set up correctly or your vehicle set up correctly. If that one there was to be if the distance was smaller, that would indicate probably an overinflated tyre. Now, if these two sides were lower, it would be the opposite way around. It would be an underinflated tyre. If just one side was wearing, it could be tracking, it could be a bearing on the way out, and same for the outside. It could be that your steering needs adjusting. But checking your wear markers can indicate other problems as well. So if you're checking them and you're happy that they're wearing evenly, you've got nothing to worry about. So the wear indicators are just there for when you get to the legal limit. You can use them throughout the lifetime of your tyre and possibly get more out of your tyre if you keep an eye on them. If you start to see that one side's wearing a little bit more than the other or it's wearing in the middle, 
you can take along the garage, you can do your pressure checks, you know what I mean? You can go along and speak to somebody and just say, why is it doing this? It could be a fault that hasn't completely developed on your vehicle, but it's there in the background. Um, it could just be your trackings out. It comes to simple things, overinflated, underinflated. All the things we just talked about, but could end up saving you money. The KO2s aren't cheap, and Michelin's aren't cheap either. So if you can save a little bit of money, just by looking at your tyre and checking it. I keep an eye on mine because I want to make sure the back's wearing as evenly as the front. If I get to the point where the back's down lower than the front, I'll swap them around. I'll get try and get the most out of my uh, tyres as I can. Now, as it happens, these are wearing really evenly. So I've had, not had to rotate them. They've been on there about two years now. So I'm happy with how the, how the van's set up and how it's performing. And even more so when I look at the tyres, and I know I'm getting, I'm going to get every penny out of them, every penny of value out of them. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that little video, and uh, I hope it's been of some help. If it has, and you like and enjoy the channel, or you're new here, click that subscribe button. If you want to share it with your friends, please do so. If you want to share it in a group, crack on. I don't care. It's nice to just help people out. Get that information out there so we all understand what we should be doing. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.